make it season. We ought to start now. But what have we got? One stump and a bat with no handle. We had a bat. Oh no, we had a bat. And I can't think what's happened to it. We swapped it for a giant catherine wheel on Guy Fawkes Day. Don't you remember? Crumbs, fancy doing that. We must have been batty. We had stumps too. I bet we didn't swap them for anything. No, we used them for playing ice hockey. And they all got broke. Couldn't you think we had more sense? Messing about with valuable things like cricket stumps. What about the ball? Don't you remember? He went into General Malt's cucumber frame and he kept it. He would. Suppose we started taking things off them. A nice fuss they'd make. You can get a cricket set for seven and six in the village shop. A bat, ball and everything. I saw it in the window. The fat lot of use that is to us. But we've not got six puts, let alone seven and six. Thrapence hate me. We're not much likely to get any more either with all belonging to such mean families. Funny, innit? The way grown ups seem to get money whenever they want it. Just go to the bank and get it out. I jolly well wish I was grown up. Except they never want to do anything interesting with their money when they've got it. I knew a grown up once. What paid to learn French? <laughs> paid to learn French? Gosh. Well, we've got to do something. Yes, but what? How do grown ups get money? Well, they say they work for it. Not that it seems much like work to me. From what I hear of it, sitting about in an office, ringing a telephone and going out to lunch with people. I like them to try real work for a bit, like what we have to do. I bet I'd sooner ring a telephone and go out to lunch with people, like what they have to do, than slave away at sums and French verbs and stuff till my brain wore out, like what I have to do. Well, they don't all work. No. Dukes get money left to them by their fathers, and burglars get it by burgling. But we're not dukes. And I tried burgling once, but it didn't come off. Still, I bet there's other ways. But what? Well, I don't know. But I bet there are. Same as Douglas says, there must be other ways. All grown-ups can't get it by being dukes or burglars or working. Anyway, I'll try and find out. Would you like another cup of tea, Mrs. Peters? Oh, thank you very much, Mrs. Brown. Uh, Maserati, isn't it? No, you? this is orange pico. Very, 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 very much indeed. I could have sworn it was Maserati. It's on the phone. The Madge always uses Maserati. It's a very nice blend. Yes, we did it. We'd have had it for a long time, as well. Oh, oh. sorry. Oh. Come in, William, dear. Sit down. You remember Mr. and Mrs. Peters, don't you? Well, William, hope to go to university, do you? Like your brother, Robert? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I was daydreaming. Miles away. Thinking about your sweetheart, I dare say. Eh, hey, Robert? Uh, <laughs> oh, I was just the same as your age. Oh, you were. The same as him. Well, behave yourself, will you? Ethel, dear, pass your brother the brown bread, will you? May I top your tea up for you, Mr. Peter? You Peters? little you beast. beast. I've not done nothing yet. <sighs> Did you see that article in the paper about um, begging letters? No. no. Said people make a fortune out of it. Gave several instances. One of a man who keeps two gardeners and a Rolls Royce by posing as a crippled ex sailor. Another of a man who makes 3,000 a year out of it. He's got an office full of clerks on the job. Uh, quite a business. Curiously enough, I received a letter myself this morning. Oh, may I? Break your heart if you didn't know. But of course, it's obviously written by a professional. £3,000 a year? Well, what would you know about it? Uh, it's almost too harrowing, isn't it? Well, there's an art in it, of course. Just enough pathos, not too much, you know, and so forth. No, I don't want it back, thank you very much. Yeah, it's like everything else, I suppose. Practice makes perfect. Sent to the right person, that letter would probably be worth a quid or two. But how do they find out whom to write to? Oh, club lists. Lists of donors to charities. Working on a large scale, of course, they use the telephone directory. Ethel, dear, pass Mrs. Peters the chocolate cake. been behaving much better of late. Mm. He didn't say a word at tea. He just sat there listening quietly and intelligently and afterwards he went up to his room. Mm. Dear sir, I'm a poor man out of work with 18 children who are all very ill. My wife is very ill. My mother and father are very ill. I am very ill. If you do not send money, we shall all die. 
Besides being out of work and very ill, I am deaf and dumb. My wife is deaf and dumb. My mother and father are deaf and dumb. Please send a lot of money to get us all cured. It is very expensive getting cured of being deaf and dumb. Yours sincerely, William Brown. P.S. I do not mind being deaf and dumb. It's not a patch on the real one. Look at the writing, it's so woven, it's pathetic. I'll copy it. No, what? I'll use it as it is. Put my own address on it. Those who work on a large scale use a telephone directory. Oh, hello, my dear. What do you want? Oh, uh, nothing. It's not blooming fair, that's what it's not. That's it, the dress book. Here's one, very promising, and it's in Robert's handwriting. Lieutenant Colonel M.H. Pomeroy, DSO, Deepstone House, Little Stedham. Lieutenant Colonel! Brown, do you hunt much? Uh, not much, Lieutenant Pomeroy. Do you shoot? Uh, not much. Mm. Don't be scared of Daddy. He's a bit grim, but he's not bad, really. Not bad? Did you have many birds last year in your place? Not as many as usual. Do you rear pheasants? Uh, not rear them. Partridges? Not a great many, not this year. What acreage is your place? Oh, pretty small. Mm. I proud myself, Brown, on upholding the old traditions. People nowadays behave anyhow. They don't care what they do or who they know. But I do, Brown. I do care. One of the reasons I moved from London was that Philippa was meeting too many of the wrong sort of people. Too many Toms, Dicks and Harrys. Too many rags, tags and bobtails. Young men one had never heard of. Young men no one had ever heard of. She picked them up at cocktail parties. But in the country, there aren't any cocktail parties. There aren't any young men selling motor cars on commission or hiring themselves out as dancing partners. In the country, one has to know the right people. I try to ensure that she does so by even here. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you look all right. You almost sound all right, but you never can tell. Not nowadays. That's why I have to make these blunt inquiries. Because even here she seems to pick them up off the hedgerows. Hedgerows? You lived uh, in the neighbourhood long? All my life. Do you find it difficult to keep a staff of servants so far from town? Uh, no. Yes. No. Oh, well, I suppose that sort of thing doesn't worry you. I suppose your parents see to it. I find it difficult. To get a really reliable butler. How about you? You're so shy. Am I? So shy and strong and simple. Oh. The minute I saw you, I said to myself, that's the prettiest girl I've ever seen. 
I don't know that I am. My eyes are really quite ordinary. Ordinary? They knock all those film stars' eyes into the middle of next week. Do you really think so? I'll say I do. Some people say I'm rather like Gloria Swanson. You're twice as pretty. Three times. I was thinking at the tennis club, your backhanders are awfully neat. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You're marvellous at following. <coughs> What's this? A letter! You do the Charleston better than anyone I've done it with. Do I really? I don't suppose I could with anyone but you. I'm a rotten dancer usually, but you bring out the best in one. Do I really? Oh! Is the The audacity! Lives five miles away and has the audacity to send me one of his miserable begging letters. I know they sort. Read an article about them in the paper only the other day. Father. Right, a couple of thousand at a time and get the names and addresses from the directory. Has an office in town. Well, he slipped up over this house. Simpson! Simpson! Do you Simpson. mean only in dancing I bring out the best in people or in other ways too? Oh, in other ways too. Oh, I'll show him up. <laughs> he didn't realise it was so near. I'll show him up. By God, I will. Well, if you'll excuse me. Just a minute. What did you say your name was? Brown. What's the name of your place? It's the um, Laurels, Vicarage Lane, Much Hadley. You infernal man! Oh, I'm sorry, I know it isn't a great estate. No pheasants, no... What humiliation I didn't realise! I should think you didn't. I should think you didn't indeed. Father! Out of this house this instant! Stand up to him, Robert! I can't! Out of this house! Father! Read that! The boy is a common criminal. Uh, I should have thought you'd have wanted a change from this place, Father. What do you mean, a change from this place? I should have thought you'd have wanted to, well, live somewhere else. I think it's good for people to have a change of scene. We've lived here ever since I can remember. You know, get to know fresh people. One gets tired, I think, of knowing the same people year after year. If you've got yourself in some kind of trouble, you've got to tell me straight out without all this beating about the bush. Of course I haven't. Nothing of the sort. Then stop talking through your hat. What are you doing down here? I'm just seeing if I got a letter by the evening post. You? I'm expecting a letter, a jolly important letter. Who'd want to write to you? No one out of a lunatic asylum would be so batty. All right, all right. I expect it'll come tomorrow. You'd be jolly surprised if you knew about it. Yes, I would, wouldn't I? Robert, this speech may come as something of a surprise to you, but I've rehearsed very carefully what I wish to say, and my mind is absolutely made up. The fact is that you and your father Criminals. I've not the slightest doubt that you make a handsome profit writing begging letters. The knowledge thrills and exhilarates me. In fact, I'm jolly excited. At the same time, I'm determined to reform you. Oh, oh gosh, here he is. Robert. 
stop it. How could you? I'm terribly sorry. I suppose you forgot our house was only five miles away? Yes. Where's your father's office? East Chief in the city. You don't work with him yet, do you? Not yet. I'll go there when I leave college. Oh, don't, Robert, don't! Well, I don't know there's anything I could do. Oh, surely there is. I did once write a poem. That would do. Anything would do rather than... I don't think I could earn money writing poetry. And my father's business does bring in rather a decent income. But it's so ignoble! Well, I don't know. I don't know. If you think I'm unworthy, I'd better walk. Oh, Robert! I'm sorry. Whatever happens, Robert, you'll find that I'm your friend. I believe I know a way to save you. Save me? This is the way to save you, Robert. A begging letter to your father to warn him that we know who he is and to frighten him into leading a decent life again. And my aged mother is completely dependent on me. Jolly good. Signed, Lieutenant Colonel M. H. Pomeroy. Mr. Brown, 52B East Cheap, London. Well, if Daddy's name doesn't scare them off, I don't know what will. Are you sure there wasn't a letter for me? Of course there wasn't, dear. Whoever do you expect to write to you? It isn't your birthday. No, 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 no. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, dear. All the same, you wouldn't think anyone would be too mean to give a bit of money to a poor old man with no legs and nothing to eat, would you? Oh, no, dear. What's that got to do with it? Nothing. I was only thinking that it's jolly mean, that's all. For all he cares, the poor old man's starved to death by now. For all who cares? What old man? What are you talking about, William? Nothing, nothing. Morning. Late, am I? Good morning, dear. I was only thinking that people are jolly mean. I'll give a poor man with no legs and starving to death a shilling or two. Well, actually, I'll give him seven and six. Seven and six? You'll give a poor man some money, wouldn't you, Mother? Oh, yes, of course, dear. How quickly your hair grows. I must take you into Hadley. Get it cut tomorrow. Mother, if you'll give me the money for the poor man, I'll give it to him. Don't talk nonsense, dear. That's all he can talk about. All he ever thinks about. Hardly any time since it was last cut. Of course, it would look better if you remembered to brush it now and then. Well, give me the money you give the man for cutting it, and I'll cut it myself. I bet I could do it as well as what he does, and it'll save you money because there wouldn't be the bus fares to Hadley. William, don't be silly. I shan't do anything of the sort. Mother, will you give me seven and six for a new cricket set? I've not got one, and I'll probably get ill with not having enough exercise. No, William, I won't. Well, you know what your father said. You're to have no more money until that bathroom window has been paid for. Bathroom window? Well, you broke it. Don't chide him, dear. He'll be late for school. Hopeless. Might as well spend what we've got on toffee apples. Oh, by the way, remember that conversation we had the other day about begging letters? Oh, yes. It's rather odd. I had one sent to me at the office this morning from an address at Little Stedham. That's only five miles down the road from here. How extraordinary. What name? Pomeroy. Pomeroy? Now, get on with your homework, will you? Isn't Pomeroy the name of the people Robert just got to know? He says they have a big estate. They live in tremendous style. How extraordinary. He must have got my name and address from the London directory and didn't realise I lived down here. What sort of a person is he? Robert said he's rather overpowering, very big. 
shoots a lot and that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, according to his letter, he is suffering from a horrible complication of diseases depriving me of the power of speech and movement. He also has an elderly mother entirely dependent on him. And listen to this. It is several months now since either of us have tasted anything but potatoes. They have four-course dinners every night. Evidently makes a very good thing of it. Are you going to get the police, dear? Oh, I don't think so. He'll make enough trouble for himself without me making it for him. Goodness gracious! Where is he? Where is he? Why, Shrine? He's not going to get away with this. I'll expose the blackguard. By gad, sir, you move about very easily for a man with no legs. And the clothes you're wearing would hardly come into the head in of rags, one would think. Beg your pardon, sir, I didn't quite catch your name. Pomeroy, Lieutenant Colonel Pomeroy of Little Stedham. Oh, then may I congratulate you, sir, on the sudden restoration of your faculties. What? Your health, I hope, has not been seriously impaired by your recent diet. Philippa, by gad. Good Lord. William. I'll just wash my hands. Oh, no, you won't. Come here, William. What does this mean, Philip? Well, I wanted him to know that you knew. I wanted to save Robert. Save him? I thought he was worthy of better things. Robert didn't send this letter, did he, William? Uh, Why did you send it, William? I wanted a new cricket set. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. By mm. God, that's good. I shall forget that in a hurry. What's in the new cricket, said the little devil? Oh, well, here you are. That's all your artificial leg. <laughs> <laughs> the best you've ever heard in years. What is the new cricket, said the little devil? <laughs> artificial leg. <laughs> oh, Robert. Oh, you right. I can't apologize. I'm writing begging letters. Begging letters. Well, it's you had an office with your father and What a strange and bizarre introduction. Yes, Cor, cool. did he really send you the money for that begging letter? Of course he did. Oh, well, in a sort of way he did. Cool. <laughs>